Hello everyone, welcome back to part 5 of our uh, winter train tutorial series. Um, so we will continue with our modeling. So far we learned about the mirror modifier, the solidify modifier, and probably the most important, the subdivision modifier. Uh, in the next two parts, uh, we're going to hopefully finish modeling the main cabin and we will go over some of these again some so we will continue using these modifiers and the methods you saw so far uh, which is good because we will just become a little more used to them uh, but also get into how to model with um, you know other methods um, so yeah Let's uh, get this going and please uh, don't forget to leave a like, hopefully subscribe and uh, leave a comment if you so wish. Uh, yeah, let's get to work. Okay, going on. So, uh, I'm taking another look at the reference here because... Um, you know, I I just don't want to do everything because of the background image. Like, it actually is pretty good. So, there's that, of course. But, um, how about we do... I mean, really, that's kind of the same thing, if you think about it. Um, right, then here's how we do it. Uh, let's go back into x-ray mode <coughs> and as we can see for this particular cylinder that's nothing really we can do really um, we can uh, shade it to auto smooth then go into edit mode by pressing tab again um, press one to look at it uh, from its side view and um, let's see what can we really do here so the first thing I can notice is I should turn off the proportional editing then GNZ and get this to intersect the entire main cylinder that's pretty cool then uh, select this face, the main face, of course, and insert this face. Again, you select the face, press I, and then move your mouse inside. So basically, the face will uh, create a loop around it. Um, now having this, press E, then uh, it's normal. It's going to show up by default and just drag your mouse up, something like that. Uh, go back into extreme mode to see what we, we have. Um, let's go into vertex mode, select all these upwards vertices and get this down. And maybe I'm going to just scale this. At this point, uh, I scale on everything but set. Um, but yeah, at this point, it's uh, here a little bit, just like, just bring details in, right? Um, and this is why I said in the uh, first video, really, it's um, really a beginner tutorial towards an intermediate. Like, you will do a little more complex uh, models but you won't really do necessarily super complicated um, actions or whatever. Uh, you basically will just do simple geometries just to show you that you can do that and just stick to really simple objects to create uh, super nice models. Um, that being said, it is a little more complex when it comes to the modifiers. 
Um, <coughs> we'll go a little more over them, of course. But um, yeah, I mean, the modifiers, you will have to get to know them. Like you need to work with them a little bit until you really get used to it. Now, let's get this done a little bit. And right now it's just kind of like follow the reference and add um, some details here and there. So for example, I added this loop here, then bevel it. There's nothing like this in my entire reference, like not even in on these references, right? Like everything really is simple. It's just like cylinders. Yes, you can do something over on this part, but nothing too crazy necessarily. Um, and I just want to add some details to add like some style to, to our model, right? So here's a cool uh, thing. When you have uh, all these faces selected, for example, uh, for I want to do like an extrusion on each and every face. So I'm going to have a face that's extruded and a face that stays at the same level, right? So the way to do this, really, what we need to do is with everything selected, again, uh, go to select. And what we have to press is checker deselect. What this basically does is not what we want. And that's because I'm in the wrong selection. We need to go into face selection. Then by pressing on the edge, press Alt and left click. And just as I said, it's going to select the entire loop, but not anything else. And that's what we want, right? So again, with everything selected, select, checker, deselect. And there we go. We have each and every face selected. And that's a good thing, <coughs> really. Um, now, let's press I to insert. Uh, uh, get the mouse towards the object to insert the faces inside and then E and S and again let's go towards the center and then um, we basically have what we want but maybe that was a little too much um, now to scale something on its normal if you don't do the E and S thing, what you have to do is press Alt S. This scales everything on its normal, right? So uh, that's because I don't want it to be too much here. And I think this looks pretty okay. And there we go. And it creates just that uh, small detail that I was talking about. This is what you should be doing. Uh, bring out your own creativity, right? Like just uh, create uh, details like this. That yes, maybe they are not, uh, you know, out of this world or whatever. It, they don't have to be though, right? Like you just do something like this and it's ultimately making it looks so much better just because it's here and I love this now um, let's forget for a second about all these besides the main cylinder because I don't think we gave it enough attention so to make this look better um, the first thing we'll do is go into the X-ray mode, right? And um, I mean, why should we do it? Because we have a lot of options, of course. First thing, I'm going to go into edge mode, create a loop somewhere here, I would say. Yeah, that's pretty good. Control B to bevel. 
and let's create this should do ENS and let's make this uh, geometry right here that's pretty nice and neat now go into face select and we should do that lid that we were talking about so here I wanted to a lead that's a little more similar to the Polar Express one because I think it's a little more interesting. Like it's a pretty simple lead, but at the same time, I don't know, it just gives that super rough but metallic vibe to it and I really dig it. So by selecting the face, we will insert this face and I think about here should be good. All right, then let's do an E, extrude, and get it inside, and then S, and just get it down. And then E, and get it out again. It, it, it's pretty, um, I don't know, weird, I would say, but it does the job. Now what we should do, again, um, go into X-ray mode and select all these edges and press S, X, and zero. So we can have, you know, all of them and, uh, wait, because I pressed escape. And now all of them are the exact same um, x coordinate basically which is a good thing then gg to this and let's get it uh, closer to about here and here's a small new thing um, by selecting this face we will duplicate it so shift d then right click and we still have it selected and we can press P and basically this will separate this object so right now all of it is in the same mesh but this face as you can see is not necessarily connected to the entire body so we can just press P to separate it and by the selection we will separate that face what that does for us, right? So let's just hide it for a second. Uh, delete this face because we will not be seeing it. I could be selecting this entire loop, then X, delete all the faces, and then bring back the lead. And that's a good thing because what we can do uh, really is just solidify it and if we scale it uh, let's see how much it goes in it's actually not bad um, that's pretty okay by default so let's add a subdivision surface and now it's not that great and the reason it's not too good it's mostly because it doesn't really know what to do right now um, the way to solve this really, uh, we need to actually apply the solidify modifier. Um, and the reason we do this really, it's because we will have to insert another loop here. And the same will go for here, right? Like we need this, we really, uh, have to have the actual geometry to work with. And now it looks a little more like the reference lead, which is a good thing. But there's another thing we can do, and that's actually subdividing this big boy. Because again, this is uh, something important. Don't have right angles like perfect right angles they don't exist in real life so let's not create them 
there's always going to be like these small details uh the small bends for each corner okay and this is basically a um, metallic um, like a huge metallic cylinder right so it's going to have to look the part uh, and what that does means uh, wait actually to, for you to see because I have this loop here I knew I have it because I pressed the control R and I, I want to add another support um, another support edge right here and as you can see it actually looks really good right like it's bringing a lot of detail in there already bring another one like right about here I think it looks really nice and here uh, as you can see there is a small space so let's select this actually we can just select this face and delete it the reason very simple we will never really see it so there's no reason to leave that geometry in there it just would be in our own detriment so let's close this with s and then move this on the x axis a little bit somewhere around there and now it really looks like a lead let's go take another look at our reference and as you can see um, what we can do to this is to insert the face again right and maybe extrude it a little bit inside and the reason you don't really see it it's because if we go into x-ray this has a subdivision modifier to it which means you won't really see it now we see it a little better and that's a good thing and let's insert this one more time to have a little more detail there and that's pretty okay and let's create a loop here kind of like that that's nice now what else you can do is let's take these faces and extrude them scale them on Z like quite a lot and then create this loop here this is indeed a little more complex so don't get scared if you don't really understand it uh, or something it is indeed a little uh, scarier uh, let's put another loop here and another one kind of okay right and because of this we have uh, this light cover thingy for the uh, for the lid and uh, that's actually pretty good and if you're going to look at the terrain that I have uh, as a thumbnail for these videos um, it's not really looking like this and that's because that's just how I felt to do it back then uh, now I just want to do different stuff so there's that also in edit mode we can select this face and delete it because we won't see this face either so there's no reason for this geometry to be here uh, again let's create some loopholes actually not loopholes sorry uh, just loops and uh, basically like support edges I think it's a much better description um, and really there's not something I can really explain you on how to do this is like 
how much of an edge do you want to see, right? Like the closer you get two edges to each other, the more uh, prominent will the edge be, right? Like for example, here, up here, it's pretty smooth, right? Now, if I bring this here and I bring another support edge here, we can totally see this edge and we want that. Why? Because, well, honestly, this is what I want. Uh, and secondly, because again, you should think of what kind of body or what kind of object you're trying to create. Um, so I'm trying to make a big metallic cylinder uh, and that's going to be rougher. That's going to be a, you know, a hard surface. It doesn't have smooth corners. Um, so you have to kind of keep that in mind. You kind of have to uh, think of how would it look in reality, right? Um, and again, a really good thing for it are references, right? So you can look on this Harry Potter train. The edges here are very proeminent, right? Like they look as if it's like, you know, 90 degrees stuff. Even though we know now that it's not, but you know, they do look like that. So we should um, create our own train accordingly. Okay, let's put some more uh, support uh, edges and give our geometry more uh, detail and support. And that looks pretty nice. Okay, guys, uh, one last thing I did not talk about when I talked about subdivision surface. So, um, in case you actually got a problem and your mesh looks a little weird and you don't understand why, uh, what might have happened, right? Uh, if you do a loop right here, let's say, and you bring it all the way up here, and you just put it, um, you know, you just select it and you go out of it, nothing really looks bad. But the problem is, what happens is that there's another geometry there. So it's a vertex on top of a vertex, basically. And that's a very big problem because uh, later on, when you'll try to UV unwrap it, for example, or edit this mesh, uh, you'll run into a lot of problems and most probably you won't understand why. So a way to check, and actually it's the best way to check if your mesh is okay or not, is if you press A, then M, and this will uh, give you the merge option. Uh, now you have to merge by distance because uh, this will basically merge all the vertices, the vertices, sorry, uh, that are close to like one millimeter from each other. And that usually is already really close. But what can happen, and we don't really want that, is when you go with your um, loop very close to another edge, it might get uh, too close, in fact. So when you merge these vertices to uh, not have any geometry on top of each other, you might, by mistake, actually unite some vertices you did not intend to. Uh, and this usually can happen uh, when you have a more complex geometry. And that's because in, on corners, uh, they will get closer than on the rest of the mesh. And because of that, you might get tricked into actually destroying your own mesh because basically uh, you will unite those vertices. And if you don't see that, you're going to have a really big problem in the future. So what I do advise you guys to do is before you merge these vertices, 
create a duplicate of your object just in case uh, and you can keep it hide it and uh, you know actually um, so you duplicate the object right uh, move it a little bit and then you can hide it and um, turn off the render just for you not to be uh, I don't know to have it in your scene by mistake or something so uh, also yeah that's a problem uh, before you render anything even though I'm gonna talk about this later on when we talk about the renders um, make sure everything that you want has the render turned on because uh, I had this problem of rendering an animation and that usually takes some time uh, and after like a few hours of rendering I realized I didn't turn off one object and because of that I basically had to go back delete everything and re-render everything which is very annoying also um, so yeah this is one I wanted to talk about also there's one more trick to this uh, dilemma really um, you can always turn on the auto merge vertices basically what this will do is every time you'll create a loop and you get it too close uh, well this is not close enough really but if you get it like let's say around here as you saw it merged it so there's no geometry on top of each other now if I do the same thing but like this right now we have a vertex in top of another vertex which is the problem I just described you and it's uh, really bad and really annoying uh, so yeah that's uh, kind of it for this video um, in the next video I'll show you guys how to uh, model uh, using curves which is actually pretty fun um, and hopefully we're going to finish the main cabin uh, in the next one or two videos I'm pretty sure um, and then we can go to materials lighting and uh, maybe some procedural modeling because I know I didn't show it I'm not gonna do something too crazy about it it's just gonna be some uh, simple introduction to, pro uh, to procedural modeling um, so yeah uh, thank you for sticking uh, till the end of this video. Uh, I hope you find uh, something that helped you along the way. Um, and if not, maybe some of the other videos will. Um, so, you know, you better subscribe so that you don't miss those videos because they actually might contain something you really want. So, yeah, thank you guys very much and uh, see you in the next video. Bye.